Hello and welcome to another episode of OSA TV. And this is another segment of our episode, What is a Fish? So one of the most charismatic, widely recognized, and popular marine fish of all time are the Aiken thurids. So that family is the surgeon fish, also known as the tangs. These guys are tremendously diverse, centralized around the Indo-Pacific, but they radiate all across the world, everywhere where there's a coral reef or even a tropical area. And they are just infinitely freaky and fascinating. They essentially are like cows. So we went over in our rabbit fish episode how just like cows, rabbit fish are kind of this big consortium of bacteria that line their intestinal tract and they're designed to take in all kinds of algae, bacteria, all kinds of forage that's not fish tissue and turn that into fish tissue. So the tangs are the same way. They harbor all these different bacteria that allow them to break down all these different algae, seaweeds, basically they're designed to be micro lawn mowers of the reef and they turn that into all these fantastic shapes and colors. But the peculiarities of that, as far as which tangs, which species benefit from which specific seaweeds and which specific compounds, is still shrouded in a mystery and frankly the coveted secret of people that work with these species for years and years and years and years. So first we're going to talk about a few general features of the Canthuridae and then we're going to be talking a little bit about their care requirements and then we're going to be talking a little bit finally about their future in the reef hobby. So first of all, they're called the surgeon fish because you can see uh, that even though there's a tremendous amount of diversity, you can see here a scopus tang, a powder blue tang, and a dory, a blue tang right here, but they're all united because they have this surgeon's blade, this, this scalpel, this, this, this serrated appendage at the base of their tail fin there. And they use that to fend off both each other, predators, and do all kinds of things. And that's very important for the tangs, especially as they grow older, because they have enormous social context. Tangs, uh, numerous different species, are fascinating because based on their diet, their behavior can be extremely plastic. Some species of tangs, when they're young, exist in these big shoals, others go solitary, others form up into small squads, and all this can change based on where they are and how they're raised early in life. So scientists are still trying to figure out the particularities of that. So they're called the surgeon fish. They benefit from all kinds of grazing on seaweed, algae, all kinds of, uh, you know, the most diverse forage you can offer in your tank, the better. So I really do recommend that these guys get put into more seasoned aquariums uh, so that they can have access to all this natural forage. But then again, some people have equal to greater success with these guys in, in fish only systems as well. Um, they do not have scales like most fi fish species, so they are highly susceptible to ick, velvet, and other skin parasitic diseases. So oftentimes these will be the first, if not second, fish infected with these in the tank. So I refer to them also as a canary in the coal mine species. They have been so extremely coveted in the hobby for so long. And if you talk to anyone who's spent decades in the reef hobby, they will always tell you, in my day, yellow tangs used to be $20, $30 a piece. Now they're hundreds of dollars. Now there's a reason for this. Tangs, like many other marine organisms, have a very complex larval life cycle. They're not nearly as easy to breed as all the freshwater pond fish. So tangs, uh, for the longest time, we could not breed them in captivity. So all tangs, the broad majority, even to this day, were extracted and are extracted from the wild. Um, which is fine because these guys do have huge natural shoals and to an extent with certain practices they can be sustainably harvested. But over time, the hobby just grew and grew and grew and grew. It spread to new regions, new countries got interested in it, and more and more tangs got absorbed every single year to the point where a few years ago, heavy tang producing countries such as Indonesia and states like Hawaii said, we're done. That's it, no more tangs, we're trying to preserve our resource because we're starting to over extract them and people even in the fish stores notice that tangs that were available were getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where the average tang available is a fraction of the size that it was 30 or 40 years ago. Because of this huge economic demand and the fact that the reef industry is not gonna go away, it's just going to adapt and grow and mature, people got invested, people got nutty. So they figured out 
how to breed these guys. So the University of Hawaii was able to cultivate the, the first aquacultured yellow tangs, and then the University of Florida, down south from here, was able to aquaculture the first blue tangs. Uh, apparently the, the trick was using ciliates as a first feed. So by being able to produce these guys in captivity, now companies such as Biota are refining those published practices and being able to produce these aquacultural organisms at a greater and greater scale. And this will lead to, one, a greater knowledge of how to raise these guys through and through, which will always trickle down into the increased husbandry and care practices on the average hobbyist. Two, it'll provide a more consistent supply of these animals, so the price will at least create a baseline instead of being swayed by whether or not certain countries and states will open up uh, fish fishing. And then three, uh, you, know, you can have the pride knowing that the tangs that live in your tank you know, weren't necessarily having to be taken from the ocean because the hobby is moving in a direction where we, we see such value in these animals that we're willing to put in the labor, the thought, to produce something of, of greater value in the long run. So tangs, they have very freaky biology. They are here to stay in the reef industry. Uh, even if they won't be wild caught forever, we are living in an age where it's become ever obvious that more and more will be farmed and available in the hobby of the future.